handing out all that cash for furlough, business support schemes and so on. But having spent four hundred billion pounds during the pandemic on those anti-COVID support measures, cash is now tight. So what the Chancellor is trying to do is position himself to say, I know the cost of living squeeze is there. We've been talking about it for months on GB News. It's made much worse by the war, fuel bills, food bills and so on. And he wants to say, I'm putting my arm around more vulnerable households. I'll stand by you, the Chancellor has been saying in recent days. But it is going to be really tough. That We talked about that national insurance rise. <coughs> Let's just put that in context, what that is. If you're a basic rate taxpayer, that national insurance rise alone is going to cost you 178 quid a year. And if you're a higher rate taxpayer and more and more people are getting dragged into that higher rate tax bracket, you know, not particularly senior teachers, police officers are getting into that high rate tax bracket. That national insurance rise alone is going to cost you £715 a year. Wow. That's a holiday. Yeah. 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 That's a lot. Mm. That's a lot to, to make up. And um, Emily, the thing is, though, it's the great unknown for the Chancellor, isn't it? It's this whole balancing the books and not knowing what's around the corner in terms of pandemic, in terms of Ukraine, in terms of inflation. Yeah, that's true. And I think Sunak will certainly talk about that in his statement today, how the aspiration is to balance the books. But I mean, there have been reports and analysis done this week about how he potentially does have billions in terms of wiggle room. Mm -hmm. He does have the money there what because of like? ri ri because what? of uh, tax revenues and yeah. so on. But what would you like to, to, that money? Where would you like that money to go to be seen to be done with that money? Well, I think it should be used to scrap these unnecessary tax hikes, national insurance, essentially a tax on jobs. This isn't the time to be doing it. He's going to be talking about security. He's going to be talking about security okay, for people at home. I say to you, is this the time we always say, fix the social care system, fix the, the NHS. That seems to be what people want. Then when it comes to actually doing it and paying for it, nobody wants to do it. Are you saying the aspiration is wrong or the timing is wrong for this? I think the aspiration in some ways is wrong. I think public spending has spiralled out of all control. We saw how much spending, how much money was spent over the course of the pandemic. We need to claw back from that. We can't be spending at emergency levels for much longer. And of course, the Chancellor always has different groups, different departments essentially begging for money. But he's going to have to say, actually, we need to go for growth. We need to prioritise not taxing our population so highly. And then we can get higher tax revenues in the future. And it's interesting you ch you chose this um, front page for the Mail, which is talking about him as a high tax chancellor. And Eamon was talking a little bit earlier about a lunch we went to two weeks ago when he was actually talking about his children. He was joking that their conservative instincts hadn't yet kicked in. But for a lot of people, the chancellor's conservative instincts haven't yet kicked in, have they? Because he's just <laughs> raising taxes. Well, yes. I mean, he talks a good game when it comes to lowering taxes. He says that's the aspiration. He says that this spring statement will lead us on that path to lowering taxes. But we haven't seen any of that. I mean, of course, we've had a pandemic where he's had to splurge, but he needs to get back to lowering taxes. That's what Conservative voters want. That's why people put him in office. Mm. So he needs to uh, show more than just, uh, you know, uh, saying he's going to do it.